uh, basic points around my attitude and my experience in recent times uh, about the kind of unions that we need. Um, I'm an organiser in the construction sector. I represent mechanical workers. Uh, it's actually relatively new to me of a background representing, as Des says, uh, bricklayers and carpenters. But the truth of it is, workers are workers, and it really doesn't matter what the workplace is, the tasks are generally the same. Um, the first example that I want to give in terms of thinking about the kind of trade union uh, that we need, I would have been uh, in the last couple of weeks uh, on a building site um, in the Matter Hospital where uh, one of our members had been stood down for three days because of a misdemeanor of an on-site policy. He was stood down for three days. That meant that he'd lose three days' wages, uh, which is a massive impact. He'd only been back to work a couple of weeks. So when I went up to the site, um, fortunately, uh, the mood was uh, of uh, the, the, the mood for action was already in play. Uh, so there was a good response there from the workers. There's about 130 workers in the various cabins. So when I went up there, I was obviously asked and put on the spot, I suppose, in some ways, what do we do? What's the task? What would the union advise? And I know what the union generally would advise in that context, and I know what my task is. My task was advice that we engage with management, we engage in the grievance and disciplinary procedure that exists, and if we have to, so we're prepared to refer on to a tour party. And at some point in time, we might actually get a victory. Now, obviously people in the room will have a lot of experience of the time process that's uh, involved in such an engagement. In the construction sector, the hollow uh, the victory is likely to be even more hollow because the project is likely to be finished. So I didn't say that, obviously, uh, uh, I, particularly with the mood of the workers. We had a discussion. Nine leaders went to the various part of cabins because on a construction site, what you have is you've effectively almost like part of cabins on top of each other. And there was uh, five of them, but about 130 workers. Where the leading people were, they had a discussion amongst themselves, went to the various canteens, 130 workers stopped, advised management until their colleague went back to work, none of them were going back to work. Uh, 15 minutes later, everybody went back to work. Uh, that absolutely is the type of union that I want. Uh, uh, that's the experience uh, 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 I've <laughs> brought. And, uh, you know, I contract, it was very interesting actually, uh, uh, one of the workers made a point to me there, going back, one of the leading people who we'd been discussing with for a whole period of time beforehand, he, he said, that's a real illustration of the arguments that we've been putting forward in terms of actually how we can do things. Um, so that didn't happen by accident. It's absolutely not the case. We had done the work there for several months. We discussed with workers. We had uh, uh, engaged outside and inside the workplace of workers. We'd also had an important short-lived but well-publicised dispute there. So when we did the work and were prepared to put the effort in, uh, workers would step forward. Um, um, that's, uh, there's, there's countless experience examples of that. I contrasted that experience a couple of weeks later with going to a launch by the Communist Party um, of a pamphlet, the challenge to the for the trade union movement going forward. And it was, it was very good. Uh, there were some excellent people there making some excellent points. I wouldn't have known a lot of the people, so it was very good to see some of the history of the movement and so on and so forth, and I quite enjoyed it. But also, some of our illustrious leaders were there, um, and they made the point that, you know, it's extremely difficult to organise workers. One leader made the point, it's extremely difficult to organise construction workers because of the attacks uh, uh, in the sector in recent times in terms of the registered employment agreement and because of the sheer downturn in the sector. Now, it was probably petulance on my behalf, but I couldn't help myself. I obviously had a story ready to throw in there. Um, but it was a fraternal type of an affair. So when I threw the story in, uh, I got the response back by saying, you know, well, that's very good, Tom, and, you know, fair play. You were a bit lucky there, and you're a good man. And the response back was that, you know, applying that to the wider trade union movement is a little bit simplistic and it doesn't necessarily apply. But fair play to you, sit down there. That was the response that I got from, from leading people. And I sat down and I thought about some of the points. They had said to me specifically that that type of trade union is not sustainable and it's not reflective of the general mood. Now, Des had said there earlier, I had been involved in a nine month strike with a trade union actually. There's lots of things I could say about that. I'm not gonna get into in too much detail. But one of the points, and this raises the point about the sustainability of the labour movement in the right context, Mary McAvoy had worked for Batu for seven months. She stayed on the picket line for nine months. 
I asked her after it because she's a good friend and a good colleague, but I didn't know her prior to the strike, and she had an honour to pick it. That would have been sufficient. I asked at the end of it, why did you remain for nine months, Mary? And she said it was the right thing to do. It was the right thing to do. Uh, her only role in it was actually to support people who had been sacked. She went on strike and she got sacked for going on strike herself. She stood in a picket for, pick for nine months. Other examples, uh, I see comrades from the Lord Ashley dispute here. Uh, workers who hadn't been involved in the labour movement in the past, in the right context, were prepared to step forward. And I think they remained on strike for five or six months. The Connolly workers, I think, in excess of a year. So the argument of sustainability of workers doesn't travel. It absolutely doesn't travel. In terms of the general mood, I have to say, right, and I think uh, a comrade from the Social Party said to me, uh, Tom, when you're on the phone to me, are you making these stories up in terms of the day-to-day -day experience that I have? Um, I had, arising from that particular episode, I had a guy, I said already that I don't have a whole lot of history in the mechanical sector of the construction industry. So one of the lads rang me post that demonstration, post that stand down, and said to me, uh, Bit of a suggestion, Tom. Given the fact that you've met five or six or maybe more plumbing activists out there, do you think there's a prospect of tapping into that uh, experience that you have and bringing people into a room and having a discussion? Sure, if the only thing we got out of it, we uh, were in the position to ring each other in the event of uh, any sort of challenge to our overall terms and conditions of employment, which had happened earlier on in the year. The registered employment agreement had been reduced uh, with no attack and no response, and I'll make some other points about that in a minute. But here was a worker telling me the need to get organised, the need to get networked, to be able to respond to the event of further attacks by the employers. Um, so for an organiser in that sector, this was obviously grist uh, to, to the mill, we had a meeting there last Thursday evening, and nine activists turned up to it. One of them uh, had been sacked that day, and he still arrived at the meeting. Uh, so the points to Stevie there, this, I'm not making them up, it actually happens every day of the week. Um, and again, I think we could speak about, I mean, the construction workers, actually, the point does come to mind there, that when the registered employment agreement was being reduced, and someone said to me at the break, we might be a little bit curtailed by the fact that I'm a union official, theoretically, uh, and that I have a history in the trade union movement, the construction sector, I might be a, a bit curtailed and actually spelling out exactly what I think uh, of the, our, our illustrious leaders in the construction sector. Uh, we had, uh, there was a reduction of the registered employment agreement in February of this year. Uh, the trade unions, which are seven unions to represent construction workers, uh, did a deal with the construction employers to reduce the rates of paying for this employment construction workers solely, solely that they have a license to organise workers in the sector, not organise uh, within the registered employment agreement it specifically makes the point that people have to be members of a trade union. So when you take all the discussion and all the debate, really what it was, we'll engage in this collective bargaining process for yourselves, you make sure you give us the members. That's the long and the short of it. But despite that, despite that, 50 building workers turned up with their own legal representation. They could manage to get themselves organised to actually respond. Now, the point that I'm touching on all these workplace examples and my experience in over the last uh, number of years is that I actually think uh, that uh, that uh, mood is out there. I think uh, these things are happening, that as attacks present war on workers either in the workplace or at the wider level, they'll respond because a natural orientation is to organise. The example of the 50 building workers, the points made by that guy, the plumber that I said earlier, it's a natural. If any one of us, uh, or any five of us, were in a workplace tomorrow, that would be the best starting point. What's, why do we do that? Because we're, we're actually balancing up the power relationship between the employer and ourselves. We walk into a room, there's an individual in the room, but if we walk in on behalf of five or six or 20 or, or 100 workers, we, 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 we in some ways address that power relationship. Um, so obviously all of these things are happening uh, and obviously the question then for us is what's our task? Because if these things are happening, well, sure, workers are organising themselves, you might argue the point, but it has to be absolutely more than that. It has to be linked to a network. Like I said, that guy, Brian, in the construction sector, the need for a network and linked to a programme from change. Now, I'm not going to labour on the points about the programme because I think Kieran covered them all well in terms of what needs to be done. But I wouldn't mind just saying something about the leadership of the trade union movement, just from my uh, experience. I actually spent a bit of time yesterday evening trying to look at the positions that the ICTU take and I was looking through the website, I was looking through some materials at home and I was trying to 
rather than just engage in the leadership bashing for the sake of leadership bashing, I was looking to try and be able to extract some of the positions that they take uh, and make a, a, an argument uh, against it that was reasonable and it wasn't just a case of giving out a bit to the leaders because they're in the position. So I downloaded the uh, ICTU strategy meeting document from the 20th of January 2010 and I tried to walk my way through it and I tried to find uh, you know, sharp arguments to argue against. Uh, I went to the conclusion in the first instance and the conclusion makes the point about what we need to do. We need to establish relationships with government, we need to develop civilised industrial relations or right, environment. That was the conclusion, that's where they should go. But he started off by saying, it is interesting, this is produced by David Begg, it is interesting to note that similarities of some of the items that we're discussing today is what we were seeking 30 years ago. So the starting point is, what we don't have, and we spent the last 30 years not getting, uh, uh, as a byproduct of being engaged in a period where we were engaged with government and the conclusion is we should develop further relationships with government. It's an extraordinary, so I stopped looking for the complex arguments, uh, uh, thank God Kieran covered them there today, I would have been thrown. But in the midst of all that, and this is extraordinary, uh, 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 Comrade, it absolutely is extraordinary, in the appendix, right, it makes the point, the trade union movement is the largest civil society organisation with 840,000 members straddling both sides of the island. And then benchmarks that against the IFA having 40,000 members. And I thought, they've included this in it. And I was trying to find an analogy and I was talking to someone on the way in. It's like alluding to a sledgehammer, right? But producing a rubber mallet. Because that's what he did. 840,000 uh, people uh, on, this, on the island of Ireland who are trade union members. Uh, and the most they can come up with is tops covered. One very last point in terms of the leadership. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because we're talking about the need to develop and create a network that will bring about change, bring about change in the trade union movement. Um, so, you know, we, we sometimes have to dissect some of the points and we sometimes have to find very specific tasks that we actually rally around ourselves. Congress' position on the austerity measures has been, there's a better way, there's a fairer way. Now, in thinking about that, effectively they're saying we should pay anyway. We should extend the payment, but we should ultimately pay anyway. The argument should be the better way is we don't actually pay. That's the position that the Irish Congress of Trade Unions should take. And just crunching some numbers there during the week uh, and, and discussing with people and so on, uh, it fell out from a conversation with having somebody that 3.5 million is the figure on an annual basis that the state will give to bailout Anglo. Obviously, 3.5 billion this year is the figure that we're talking about cuts. So on that simple issue alone, if the Irish Congress of Trade Unions had the wherewithal to say, actually, uh, we won't pay for a failed bank, and in fact, there's an immediate uh, benefit for workers, we won't have to make the cuts uh, uh, that we've been talking about if that one act alone. So um, I'm throwing that point out uh, from the point of view of maybe um, if we do develop a programme and an approach it's, 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 it's around issues like that that we should be looking at. Um, the very last point that I would make, and you know, uh, in terms of a programme for change and a forum like this, someone like myself who's an organiser uh, will absolutely benefit from this in terms of being able to go back into workplaces. Kieran was making the point there about the need for you know, a national approach to how we do our business, and absolutely that's the case. But we also need, as leaders in this room, to be armed with the material to go back into the workplaces. And one of the key uh, ways, one of the key uh, items in our arsenal will be what's transpired in this room today. Because I'll be in a position to go back to those group of workers who were courageous enough to stand down a <coughs> hundred and tour to them. But uh, you know, uh, if we don't have that link to something that's about change in the trade union movement, the danger is that'll be frittered away because I've experienced those. I've been in the privileged position over years to be a trade union organiser and represent people. I have seen them time out of number. There's a lot of uh, uh, contingency here from Batu and we could, we could talk all night about the, 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 the times where builders have been taken on, we've turned them over and walked away sniggering and we've had these conversations. But unless it's linked to something significant, well, it will be frittered away on a regular basis uh, and the trade union leadership will be the ones to advance the issues and they won't advance the issues for reasons pointed out there earlier. Um, 
I also just want to uh, make the point in terms of the programme for change, I do think right, that the programme for change, obviously my bread and butter is workplace issues and being able to be relevant to workers, advance issues and not act as a barrier to workers as a lot of uh, colleagues here or trade union officials generally do. Um, but also uh, a programme for change needs to be linked to the wider picture here. Uh, in terms of uh, events on the political stage. I looked at that programme there last week, uh, the front line, and I think, other, I'm sure the other people did. But that kind of had the effect uh, for the media for the rest of the week to discuss about the tens of thousands that people get while on the social welfare. Uh, that I think they were talking about at one stage, one family could receive 90,000, extraordinary figures. But obviously we know that that's about softening up for reductions in, in social welfare, for reductions in public sector pay, for reductions in minimum wage and so on and so forth. So if that's not an issue that affects the workplace, I don't know what is. So we do need to be broader in terms of the thinking and the looking at what we're doing because these are the questions that the likes of myself who are going into workplaces to try and organise, to try and build something up organically, will be faced with. So whatever discussion takes place from here, there will be a practical value for the likes of me uh, to be able to bring into the workplace, uh, develop things at an organic level, and it's in that context that maybe the point that Kieran said about developing a national approach will emerge. Thanks very much. Thank you.